Audi and Cadillac, out of all brands, are taking another shot at Tesla, definitely outshining them as far as some exciting news are concerned this week. Cadillac unveiling its 300 mile range electric SUV. We'll have Cadillac's head of brand and marketing here to answer some tough questions. And Audi dropping the price of the e-tron while increasing its range. Inside EV's contributor Tom Malogny is going to be here to tackle both topics. But then we got tons of Tesla and other electric car news. Like the cheapest electric car in the world being launched in my home country of Russia, out of all places, Lucid claiming they will beat Tesla with the longest electric car range in the world. A couple of electric car companies going public and we will hear from the CEO of one of them, Fisker, who's also going public, who finally finds a factory. And tons of Tesla news as always. Stay tuned for all of this coming up next. Welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source of electric car scoop. There's tons of electric car news this week and that's what we do every week so if you are interested in everything that's going on in the world of electric cars go ahead and click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward let's start with a big unveiling cadillac has unveiled its all-electric suv lyric with over 300 miles of range now i was lucky enough to see it in person when gm invited me and a few other journalists back in february to check out all of the GM's upcoming electric cars, including the Hummer EV and the new generation Bolt. But I gotta say, in person, I like the Lyric the most. Let me know what you guys think just by looking at these videos, which I don't think do justice to the car. Put that in the comment section of this video. If you like the way the Lyric looks, the good news is the design is about 80% complete. So the final version should look very similar to what you are seeing right now. As I mentioned, it will have over 300 miles off range using GM's new Ultium 100 kilowatt hour battery that they are developing with LG Cam. It will have 150 kilowatt top rate fast charging, of course, the 33 inch curved display, and something called supervised remote parking with or without the driver. I'm assuming this is going to be something very similar to Tesla's parking lot summon. Also, the price is not yet announced. Now, of course, the big question is, will the Lyric be able to compete with the industry-leading Tesla when it goes on sale two years down the road? Let's ask that question of the guy who will have to worry about it, and that's Cadillac's global head of brand strategy and international marketing, Phil Douchy. All right, so let's start with an obvious question. You know, this car is at least two years away. Do you think it will be competitive with the industry leader Tesla two years down the road? So our car will be competitive in the marketplace. It will be competitive with the range of electric vehicles that we now know that are on the market, sure, that are on the market today. But we are and have projected out, you, we've said that our car is going to be getting at least 300 miles of range. And could we have been a little more aggressive and maybe a little more boastful in terms of absolute range? Absolutely. Um, and will we have fast charging capability? Yes, we will. And are we building out the network? We sure are. As we have announced a partnership with EVgo to build out 2,700 different new EV charging stations. So there's also a new consumer experience that we're putting together, right? So when you look at what other competitors are doing, of course, we're benchmarking, but we're also looking to go above and beyond. What do you think of Phil's answer? Let me know in the comment section of this video. Tom Malogny will be here to definitely give us his opinion on this story. But before that, let me update you on another Tesla Challenger story, which I thought was actually pretty big. And that's Audi announcing that they will cut the price of the Audi e-tron next year by almost $9,000. That means that after the tax incentives here in the United States, the Audi e-tron will start at around $58,400. On top of that, Audi will increase the EPA range of the e-tron from 204 miles to 222 miles, and that will be due to the battery buffer decreasing by 3 kilowatt hour and therefore giving that to the capacity of the usable battery plus some software and hardware improvements, so more range for less money. All right, let's talk about this and the Cadillac Lyric unveiling story with Inside EV's contributor, Tom Malogny. All right, Tom, uh, Tesla is not the center of attention this week. Cadillac and Audi are. 
and uh, you saw the unveiling of Lyric. Let's start with that. What are your initial thoughts? So it was kind of a little bit of a letdown to me, Alex, to be honest with you. Okay, do tell. So, you know, I was expecting to get a little more information. We didn't get a whole lot of information about the car. And it's obviously, it's their concept car. So it's not even what the real Lyric. Now, GM did say it's going to look 80 to 85% like you see the concept there. But it's kind of like, come on, Cadillac, you know, you should have a, a, a long range, luxurious electric car by now. It's, you know, a 2023, really? So let me ask you this. So we're obviously talking the umbrella of the GM and they got, you know, the bold going on and, and uh, other brands uh, like Hummer, for example, that they're resurrecting. But do you think the expectation is higher from Cadillac because it's a higher priced luxury brand? And, you know, obviously you're making one of your first all electric cars going to cost some money so if anything it's the Cadillac brand of the GM empire that should be ahead of the uh, entire portfolio that's really how I look at it this should be a halo car there should have a, a 300 mile uh, you know long range luxurious you know uh, Cadillac to, to spearhead the the, the brand uh, it's it's disappointing that Cadillac is bringing this out so late you know if if this was coming out, say, in the spring, in eight months, I'd, I'd be a little juiced about it because it looks like it's a nice vehicle. It's got 150 kilowatt DC fast charging. It's going to have 19.2, uh, I think, kilowatt uh, uh, AC charging for home charging, uh, which is a little high. Most people can't support that in their homes. They don't have a 100 amp dedicated circuit. But it seems like they're trying to make it premium. The interior looks beautiful. Uh, I'm not thrilled with the front. It kind of has that Lexus front grill look, which I really don't like. Um, but in any event, it's an overall a decent package if they're launching it today. Is that going to be a great package two and a half years from now? I, you know, I, I can't really say. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's very disappointing to me. And, and, and so where do you think the problem lies here? Do you think it's commitment from GM? to electrification or do you think they simply can't do it yet simply they don't have enough engineers or good enough engineers and technology to get it done next year like you and i would probably would like well they absolutely can do it gm has fantastic engineers uh if they put their mind to it they absolutely could make a dynamite electric car uh it's just you know the, the, they're not fully committed and you know what uh, Maybe they're looking at what, what uh, Jaguar sales were with the I-Pace and what uh, you know, uh, Audi sales are with the e-tron. These are luxury, long-range electric vehicles and saying, uh, maybe the market's not ready for it yet, you know, even though you look at what Tesla's doing. Um, but Tesla's the only one that's been able to crack that code and do these high-volume, expensive, luxurious cars. So maybe they're put off by that. I don't know. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a shame because I think this would be a fantastic halo car if they would be bringing it out sometime in the next, you know, eight, eight to 10 months. I think it would do great for the brand. So it looks like it's a commitment then. And do you think it's kind of symbolic of the fact that the CEO of GM, Mary Barra was not at the unveiling? You know, Look at that unveiling compared to the Mustang Mach-E unveiling. You know, Bill Ford was there. They brought in celebrity spokespeople. There were hundreds of people. You and I were there. You know, it was, a, 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 I know times are different. GM really couldn't bring all these people together because of COVID for this. But they, if they were really as proud of this vehicle as Ford seems to be with the Mustang Mach-E, they would have made it a much bigger splash. Look, I, I, Look at their look at the YouTube channel, their their video on YouTube. It's like 18 hours later, they had like 25,000 views. I mean, your videos and my videos get more views than, than Cadillac's, true. you know, unveiling, uh, you know, of, of their their new electric car. So you know, it, they just they just didn't put a lot into it. I think it was just kind of like, okay, here's a car. It's coming out in three years, and. Uh, you know, they, they, they didn't put the weight of the brand behind it. it, was, it as I said, like six times, very disappointing. All right. Well, so let's move on to Audi e-tron. Um, they've just uh, announced that they're 
not only adding a few extra miles of range where well, they're also dropping the price by a significant amount and even though they still have the $7,500 uh, tax credit here in the United States now you know e-tron is a funny thing right I just did a video how e-tron is completely killing it in uh, uh, electric SUV sales in Europe I think it's out selling Model X by four or five times we're here in the United States um, if me and you would create a dealership, we would probably sell more e-trons that Audi has sold so far this year. I think it's like three or four thousand. So big contrast. Um, what do you think about this? Do you think they will actually be able to finally do as well here in the U.S. as they're doing in Europe, or do you think it's it's just the gimmicks right now? So no, they won't do as well here in the U.S. as they do in Europe. Um, absolutely not. Um, you know, Tesla owns the U.S. market in electric vehicles right now, and, and, and nobody's going to dethrone them for, for, for a while. It's going to take some time. Um, but will it help? Sure, it'll help. But obviously, like what you, you, you alluded to this, the dealership is a problem. Uh, you know, the, the, the dealers just aren't, that I've seen, just aren't wholly committed to the electric vehicles that they sell. And uh, Audi's no different. It's not just Audi, it's a problem with, with, other, with other manufacturers too. I think, you know, you go into an Audi showroom and you're asking about an e-tron and I think more, more likely than not, in many instances, you get steered into another vehicle. Oh, we could sell you this A7 that, you know, for less price and you can go wherever you want with it. You don't have to worry about plugging in. So, you know, that's going to be a problem. And that's, that's a huge part of why the e-tron and other electric vehicles in the U.S. in particular haven't done well outside of Tesla. If you want to hear more from Tom, which I always do, you can go straight to his YouTube channel. And I put the link to it in the description of this video. Before we move on to other Tesla and electric car stories, a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by Evanex. The Tesla Community's Accessory Store. Use E4 Electric, the name of this channel, as a discount code for all of your purchases over $100. Lucid will be unveiling the final design of its all electric sedan Air on September 9th, but yesterday they've announced that they will be revealing the range of the Air on Tuesday morning, and they're saying that the Lucid Air will have the longest range of all electric cars in the world including Tesla, check out this teaser. Oh, wait, wait, oh man, I, listen. <laughs> I can't wait to see what it's actually going to be, but the last number that we can see on the screen as it's fading away is 442 miles. That's impressive. We'll have to wait until Tuesday to find out what that number actually is, but even 442 obviously will give the air the crown, at least for now, for the longest range electric car. Of course, the question is, will Tesla catch on by the time air goes in production in about half a year or so we'll just have to wait and see i do recommend that you subscribe to this channel because we'll have lucid's ceo peter rollison on this channel on tuesday to talk about the revealed number so stay tuned if you watched my news video last week which i hope you did you found out that the cheapest electric car made by candy is coming to the United States at the end of this year, starting at just $13,000 after the federal tax credit. This week, we find out that the cheapest electric car in the world will be launched at the end of this year, and you will never guess which country will be making this car. That's right. This cheapest electric car will be manufactured in the same country as yours truly was manufactured in 1977, and that's Russia. It will be called Zeta and it will start at 6100 American dollars. They will be making 15,000 of them per year and 10,000 of them will be exported to other countries. Now the funny thing that in some of those countries the electric car incentives are higher than the price of the car. So I'm wondering if some lucky owners in those countries 
will literally get this car for free. Of course, the range is not that impressive. It's going to be under 100 miles on a 10 kilowatt hour battery, but that could just be enough, especially for a small car like this for some owners in Europe. So kudos to my countrymen in Russia. And as we say, Nazdarovia. I know, I know you're dying for some Tesla news and there are plenty of that. And we'll start with Elon Musk saying that they will consider making a smaller version of the Cybertruck for Europe. Everything is more compact in Europe and the Cybertruck is kind of big. As a matter of fact, it could be too big to fit into some of these American garages. Also in an automotive news podcast interview, Elon mentioned that if people won't be buying the Cybertruck because of the controversial look that it has, Tesla will redesign it into a more conventional pickup truck design. Let me know in the comment section. Would you like them to do that? Tesla figured out a way to cover up its post-production paint issues in China and they're literally going to cover them up. They are starting and launching the new wrap service in five different Chinese cities where you can have your Tesla wrapped in any color at your delivery. That's pretty clever. Just out of curiosity, let's the let's keep the comment section rolling. Let me know which color you would pick to wrap your Tesla in if you had a choice. Mine would be pink. Speaking of a Tesla quality issues, as you remember earlier this year, the JD Power quality study ranked Tesla the lowest this year, but the similar study in China completely reversed that and gave the Tesla Model 3 the only Tesla made in China the number one best quality spot. Now, obviously Tesla probably learned from their mistakes here in Fremont, California and implemented a much better quality production lines in China. As a matter of fact, this is something that I've talked to the manufacturing guru and our monthly contributor, Sandy Munro, in my conversation, which I will air in the next couple of weeks, where he said he is looking forward to the better quality of the Texas and especially Berlin factory that Tesla is building right now. Here's a quick snippet from that interview. Uh, you, you already mentioned that Tesla is building a factory. I mean, they're building one in Texas, but they've already started on the one in Germany. And uh, this is sort of a, a new start. You can hire uh, a new managers, new people. The culture is different, especially in Germany, but I'm assuming in Texas as well. Um, what kind of improvements would you expect a manufacturer to do to an existing model? You know, because Model Y will be produced in Texas as well as now in California. What kind of improvements would you expect them to do to increase the either productivity or the build quality or both when you're building a new factory? The, um, the build quality should be dramatically better, dramatically like um, so different that, um, that people will rave over it. And if it's made in Germany and it's made by folks who absolutely know how to put a product together, if they hire the right people to, uh, to make this thing put together correctly and they hire the right people to make sure that each part that's stamped is stamped properly, on and on and on, if they have that, then the, the difference will be enough that people might uh, say, I, I don't, I don't want a, an American build, I want a German build. And if I was Tesla, I might, I might consider doing that. Yep, he pretty much told me that the quality of Teslas that are coming out of the production lines in California are just not very good. And it's probably because Tesla doesn't really care about the quality as much as they care about other things that their buyers care about. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you can catch the full interview in the next couple of weeks. Nikola Motors and Fisker have gone public via a reverse merger and now it's turn of the Lordstown Motors. They will be raising $675 million to finance the production of their all-electric pickup truck Endurance. It looks like the first year of production is already spoken for based on what the CEO of Lordstown Motors, Steve Burns, told me a few weeks ago, right before launch. Uh, can, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the interest that you have so far and if you have any you know, orders or deposits that, uh, that you already got from uh, either you know, private, and, uh, private parties or, or uh, you know, other businesses? Uh, 
we're going to announce at the at the conference uh, some sp specifics around this, but we already have our first year spoken for. Uh, so even without showing the vehicle, normally you don't start taking pre-orders or orders until you show it. Uh, but pent up demand uh, was, was such that we started doing it early and we already have our 20,000. We're gonna, our first year of production is to be 20,000. We already have that spoken for. Now that's not the only electric car company that's going public. The Xpeng Motors has filed for the IPO in the United States right after they've raised the additional $300 million in funding. Much like NIO, another Chinese electric car company that's already being publicly traded here in the United States, Xpeng Motors won't be selling any cars in the United States anytime soon, though they are, both of them, NIO and Xpeng Motors, expanding to Europe in the next couple of years, starting with Norway. Now, we all love Tesla earnings calls, but this month, the Nikola Motors earnings call was very interesting as well. Now, first of all, the only revenues that Nikola Motors made in Q2 was $36,000. I think unemployment pays more right now, but get this. This was a payment from their former CEO and the current board member executive, Trevor Milton, and it was his payment to Nikola Motors to install the solar panels in his cabin and his house. He explained later that this was to showcase the off-grid lifestyle. But then Nikola's current CEO, Mark Russell, has called the Cybertruck a doorstop which I immediately remember there was a meme uh, that the Cybertruck looks like a doorstop and I, I thought I would pull it up for you guys, but when I Googled it, I found this. That's right, you can actually buy a doorstop that looks like a Cybertruck at this Etsy store from some guy in Ukraine. I'm getting one. Fisker, which we just mentioned a few minutes ago because they've also gone public via a reverse merger, have finally found the place where they will be making their electric SUV Ocean, and that will be with the help of the European auto manufacturer Magna Steyr, and the Ocean will be manufactured in Austria. You probably remember that Fisker's attempt to license Volkswagen Group's MEB platform for the Ocean's are now on hold, but the negotiations are expected to continue in a couple of months. All right, let's finish strong with some Tesla news. And in the same automotive news podcast interview that I mentioned earlier, Elon mentioned that there is still a possibility of moving Tesla headquarters to Austin. As you probably remember, Elon was very upset that the Alameda County would not allow the Fremont factory to reopen during the first spike of coronavirus here in California. And that's where he got the idea of moving the headquarters out of here and possibly to Nevada or Texas. Another interesting thing that Elon mentioned during that interview was the reason why Austin was picked as the next location for the Tesla factory. And apparently it wasn't the tax incentives or the geographical advantage for the distribution, that none of that stuff. Apparently, when asked, the California employees said the only place uh, that they're going to move to, if they had to, would be Austin, Texas, and that sealed the deal. If you want to support this channel during these difficult times, you can do it in one of the two ways. First, you can support this channel emotionally. You can send me the beautiful Hallmark cards, and I would be happy to read them. However, the better way would be to support me on Patreon. Join my Patreon community at patreon.com slash e4electric. I put that link in the description of this video as well. All right, looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.